voices of the marginalized and racialized individuals in our community that has brought her to us today as a president and founder of the Dufferin County Canadian Black Association. Alethea has a reputation for getting things done. She has spearheaded a number of initiatives in the county, including having Black History Month recognized for the first time and the establishment of a diversity, equity and inclusion committee. Alethea's passion for youth achievement and excellence is illustrated in the many youth initiatives she, she supports, including her role as director of the Youth Advisory Committee at the Centre Dufferin District High School in Shelburne. This just scratches the surface of many of Alethea's accomplishments, which is why it comes as no surprise that she was a recipient of the Town of Shelburne's highest award, the Community Excellence Award, and also recognized as one of 2020's Women of Influence. As a community leader and a change advocate, we are so pleased to be able to celebrate International Women's Day with you, Alethea, and I'll turn it over to you. Wonderful. Oh my goodness. Thank you for that very introduction. First of all, happy International Women's Day to all of the amazing women blazing trails in their own rights. And allies supporting us on our journey. So thank you so much for your support and to all the women, happy International National Women's Day. I am honored to, to be here, everyone, to share the story about the Dufferin County Canadian Association and how we got started. So once again, thank you so much, um, Shannon and Lauren, for organizing this and um, for Orangeville Public Library for inviting me to share the journey of the Dufferin County Canadian Black Association. I'd like to start off with a little bit of history and why it's important on slide two to share a bit of the history about um, Black Canadians in Dufferin County, because it's, especially for our younger audience, um, it's important to understand that Black Canadians have contributed to the fabric of Dufferin County, not just in the past year, not just five years ago, not just 10 years ago, but as far back as the early 1800s. And so if we start to look at slide three, we'll talk a little bit about the history and then we'll get further on into the actual present day and current day um, Dufferin County and why the Dufferin County Canadian Black Association was established. So on slide three, one of the first recorded uh, black settlers in Dufferin County, of course, was the Hannison family. So we have George Hannison, who was uh, recorded to be um, in Dufferin County in the early 1800s. And specifically, they ha held uh, significant holdings um, on Broadway in, Oak in Orangeville, um, specifically the north side of Broadway. The Hannison family eventually settled in Mono Township where they became one of the most prosperous farmers of their time. Hannison's family grew up to be um, prominent members of society. And of course, the last recorded um, Hannison was born on, in Orangeville in uh, around 1861. Moving on from um, George Hannison, we've got, um, next slide. Mary and William Gant. So the Gant family, again, historically, you know, significant to Dufferin County. They were farmers, very successful farmers in, in Melanchthon. And so they owned over 300 acres of farmland producing an abundance of crops um, throughout their, their lifetime. And so this is just another example of uh, the contributions of black Canadians in Dufferin County from the early ages. Next slide. Here we have again, um, Watson Ballard, another um, historical uh, significant black individual in Dufferin County who uh, made his way into East um, Caledon and uh, where he served as a servant in the, ta in the tavern. Eventually Ballard moved to um, Dundalk um, where it is now ca called um, McDowell's Corner. And all of this information I have to credit to um, the Orangeville Banner as well as um, the Museum of Dufferin, um, who was able to provide uh, some historical facts for, uh, for this presentation. Um, the last but not least, um, next slide is Richard Pierpoint. Richard Pierpoint is a legendary um, a black leader, soldier and storyteller, again, settled in East Garifaxia. Um, he has significant contributions in bringing the black community together. And so he lived out his time in uh, the township of Garifax Garifaxia. Um, until the end of his time. And so this is just a snapshot of all of the 
successful Black historical individuals that have contributed to the fabric of Dufferin County. And so it was critical that we lay this foundation for our audience so that everyone has an appreciation and an understanding for the journey that we are on with the Dufferin County Canadian Black Association. On the next slide, we'll touch on a little bit about our current, current stats. So based on the 2016 uh, census, um, we know that the Black population in Dufferin County equates for roughly 3% of the entire um, Dufferin County population. Now, some of you may say that, well, that's not a significant number, but when you put things in perspective, it is quite significant. Um, the Black community is the largest visible minority community within all of Dufferin County. So when you put things in that perspective, yes, it holds significant um, relevance. Specifically in, in um, Orangeville, as an example, there are several Black-owned businesses. And so that, again, speaks to the significance and the contributions of Black Canadians in Dufferin County, which, again, leads into why the Dufferin County Canadian Black Association was established. Uh, on the next slide, we'll talk a little bit more around current history. So, so roughly about just over a year ago, um, maybe even as far as two years ago, a group of community individuals were having just simple casual conversations around the growing black population in Dufferin County and the need to have a safe space, the need to have a space of belonging, a, a space where we can use our voice and have that strong voice to be able to advocate for the needs of um, the growing community. Of course, over the last four or five years, um, it is evident uh, the increase in the Black population in Dufferin County. And so those conversations started, you know, around two years ago. And of course, last year, we were able to host the first um, Black History Month celebration in partnership with the Museum of Dufferin. Again, drawing crowds from, you know, all across Dufferin County and surrounding areas to come out in celebration of that historic event. Fast forward into, into March of 2020, and of course, you had the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. And of course, with the onset of the pandemic, we know that the Black community was disproportionately um, affected by, by this um, virus. And so again, that heightened awareness and the need to establish an association was critical. Fast forward even further to uh, the, the number of um, racial injustices that were taking place globally, um, especially impacting the Black community. And again, that strong need and that strong voice to have a platform to advocate for the needs of the Black community was even um, louder. And so the catalyst for change essentially was a culmination of all of these activities that took place um, right across Dufferin County that resulted in the establishment of the Dufferin County Canadian Black Association formally on June 3rd of 2020. Now, one of the things that is critical to, um, to note is that though the association is here to provide a voice oh, of we're starting to lose you, Olivia. Oh dear, okay. Any better? Yeah, I think you're back. Okay, awesome. So one of the things that we pride ourselves in with the association is safe space, advocacy, educational programs, the list goes on and on. And one key particular item is scholarship opportunities for our youth. The other critical aspect of the association is all of our programs are inclusive for all. So it doesn't matter how you identify, you are welcome to participate, to come on and learn, to be able to take advantage of the many opportunities, especially learning opportunities that are available um, through the association. We are a nonprofit, um, registered nonprofit organization, uh, which is also um, another benefit um, that we have to offer. Here we highlight our mission, vision, and values. And I won't read you all of our mission um, statements. They, are, they can be found on our website. But one of the things that I'd like to highlight for everyone would be our values. Our values are the foundation of who we are as an organization. Uh, we are founded on advocacy, excellence, education, and integrity. And these four elements are critical to our success. It is critical to our driving force of what we stand for um, in Dufferin County and beyond. And so it's important that we acknowledge and highlight um, these values. Of course, we have our community outreach team and uh, with Althea Ali as well as Phil Duar. And 
it was critical for us to be able to have individuals who can speak to the uniqueness of Dufferin County because they've lived in Dufferin County. Um, they've experienced um, the uniqueness of what Dufferin County is like. And so it was critical when we're talking about diversity um, initiatives, um, it was critical for us to have individuals at the table who can speak to all of these nuances that we have within our community. And so one of the other things that I pride myself in, in sharing is that all three members of um, the community outreach team are also members of the, the, the county uh, diversity, equity and inclusion task force. So a wealth of knowledge and a wealth of experience combined um, with these three outreach teams. So if anyone is looking for someone to talk about um, diversity initiatives, we're available to come in and, and share with your organization. This is what I like to call our brag board. And so we have just a touch of some of the um, partners and supporters that have stepped up um, to support the mandate of the association. Um, not all of our um, partners and supporters are listed here. I encourage everyone to visit uh, our website, www.dufferincountycba.org to see all of the great partners and supporters that we have. Again, this is just a snapshot of all of the great partners that have stepped up and we couldn't be more appreciative because without our partners and supporters, um, as well as donors, we would not be able to provide the programs and various events that we have to offer. And so some of these programs and events that, um, that I mentioned includes, we have a monthly Ask the Expert series and this series hosts different speakers, different experts, in various industries coming in to share on, on share their expertise on the various topics. So these sessions are held the first Tuesday of each month at 7 p.m. And you can find the full listing of all our speakers um, and experts on our website. And so it's important to highlight all of these activities because it is the backbone of what um, the association stands for. And without, again, the support of our partners and, um, and um, sponsors, we wouldn't be able to, to organize some of these programs. So again, credit to much of our partners, partner, partners, sponsors, and um, member donors. One of the other things that we have planned is um, tutoring and financial literacy session uh, scheduled for later on this year. On the next slide, we talk about um, scholarship opportunities for our youth. And we have a number of scholarship opportunities open right now, um, accepting applications until May 14th. We have a scholarship from the Bill Hill Scholarship that was offered by the Dufferin County. Um, we've got scholarships that have been sponsored by Flatter Development. Um, of course, the DCCBA Flagship Award Scholarship, Streams Hub, the town of Shelburne has um, donated funds as well, as well as Cariati Law, just to name a few. And so again, we know that funding um, is one of the barriers to education and to success. And so we be able to provide opportunities for our youth to succeed. And one way to do that is um, through scholarship opportunities. On the next slide, we have some stats on uh, the impacts of scholarship and funding to our youth. So based on the 2016 um, stats scan um, results, we know that most black youth would like to obtain a university degree, but proportionately, um, they are less likely to think that they will obtain one. In 2016, although 94% of Black youth aged 15 to 25 said that they would like to get a bachelor's degree or higher, only 60% thought that they could. Uh, if we look specifically at the um, Orangeville um, Black population, this equates to 32.1% <clears throat> of the total visible minority population. So when we talk about all of these programs, events, whether it's... Um, as the experts, whether it's financial literacy, all of our programs, as I mentioned before, are inclusive. Um, so everyone is invited and welcomed to participate in our events as we, we provide them. Uh, we also have a job board and a job board is critical because one of the barriers to opportunity as well is um, the opportunity to participate, the opportunity to apply for jobs, the opportunity to, to be aware of the different opportunities and job opportunities that are available for uh, the community. So having a job board allows individuals from the diverse community to be able to um, avail themselves in all of the opportunities that are available in the community. Uh, volunteer opportunities, again, is critical for success for our youth as well as for adults. 
um, opportunities for board involvement. And so all of these things we're able to host on the Dufferin County Canadian Black Association website so that the diverse population of Dufferin County can avail themselves uh, to these opportunities. Now, this website is specifically the job board is supplemental to all of the other organizations that are doing fantastic things um, in Dufferin County. So we're just providing another outlet so that the, the, the diverse population will have these opportunities available to them. And one of the other critical things is um, our community hub um, where we provide community specific news that is relevant to the, the community. And so what I encourage um, our student population especially is if you're doing an essay, what a great space for you to come in and learn about the community, some of the great things um, that the black population is doing in Dufferin County um, to support your research, to support your papers. So what we're doing is we've basically um, cataloged all of the resources from the various outlets and put them in a centralized location for our viewers to avail themselves with. And so again, um, lots of opportunities for all of Dufferin County to, to um, be able to enjoy and um, partake in. So from a partnership perspective, of course, we're always looking for partners and supporters. And so by partnering with an association like ORS, you know, you're able to meet some of your DNI goals. Um, by no means is it um, going to fully satisfy your goals, but it is one step um, advancing you forward to help you meet those needs. It's an opportunity to support and partner with, um, with um, your established diversity committee. So if you haven't had one, we can help you along, along that journey. It's an opportunity to share your news on our community spotlight page. It's also an opportunity to have a link directly posted on your website, as well as listing on our business directory page, um, have current news delivered straight to your inbox. And the most important, if not the critical item is the investment in the future generation, investment in our youth through the many opportunities that we have um, focused on youth achievement and excellence, in particular, the scholarship opportunities. And so um, not to turn this into a sales pitch, but just to highlight if anyone is interested, you know, or membership levels. So you're able to um, support the organization through individual membership, um, as well as business partnership or membership. And there are various um, rewards available to organizations and individuals uh, who participate. So if anyone is interested, I encourage you to visit the website to find out more. And that brings me to the end of, um, of the presentation. And I could not have done this without the support of my executive team. So big shout out to uh, everyone for their support. And of course, all of the partners and supporters um, that have made the association possible. So thank you. And thank you, Orangeville, for having me. Any questions? Yes, thank you, Alethea. I'm just going to stop sharing your slide show here so we can get you back on the screen. And I'll get my camera back on. And um, please feel free, Alethea, to turn your camera back on. And then should we lose you again, I might just ask you to, to turn it back off. Um, but before we turn it over to questions, I just want to thank you and, and and to just share that I, you know, for the association to have only started in June and in the middle of a pandemic, to have already accomplished so much in such a short time is so inspiring. And as, as, as I was listening to you today, I was reminded of um, a picture book that I read with my daughter recently, and it was called Love is Powerful. And, it's, and it was actually about a Women's Day march that the young girl experienced, but the whole point of the story is to show how the power one voice can have, and then how that's amplified when community groups and, and different stakeholders like yourself come together and, and see a need in a community and then work hard to, uh, to fix that and, and to, to ensure a strong you know, community for everyone and that everyone's represented and that everyone feels welcome. And I just think it's, you know, it's that for my daughter and to see someone like you and to see all of this coming through um, and the action of one and the voice of one it is so empowering. Thank you. Thank you. And, you know, I have to say that I've had a tremendous amount of support from amazing, especially given today's International Women's Day, an amazing group of uh, female leaders right here in Dufferin County who have been, you know, you know, strong supporters, advocates, you know, saying, yes, you can, yes, this can be done. And, you know, just being that cheerleader, which is so critical. So I have to give um, those ladies a shout out. They all know who they are. Uh, you started your presentation today with a look back at our county's history, and then you ended it with recommendations on how we can all work together to build a stronger community. We know that looking back, 
helps us to move forward in the right direction. Um, so thank you for, to sh for sharing that history and some of those prominent figures that did help shape our community. Um, you know, Watson Ballard, the Gantt family, Richard Pierpoint, their courage is really inspiring to see what they overcame to what they accomplished. And I think those stories are important to, to keep sharing. Um, so as a courageous community leader yourself, do you have any figures or figures from, yeah, figures from history that you look to for inspiration and motivation in the work that you're doing? Yes, so what a great question. I'm going to have to take this one very personal. I'm going to say um, that would be my, my, my grandmother. Um, she was the backbone of our family, and without her, I would not be the woman that I am today. So I would have to give her much of my credit from a historical perspective. From a current day perspective, I have to um, give a lot of credit to my daughter. Um, I gain a lot of strength through her, watching her thrive in her own way. She's only 20, but, you know, she's not afraid to get out oh, there and get on you again. Oh dear. Okay, I'm gonna turn my turning my camera off. Hopefully that's better. Um, so I was okay, referencing yeah. I was referencing um, current day my daughter, you know, who is a source of strength and inspiration for me because she's not afraid to get out there and get uncomfortable. She's not afraid to be bold. And so when I see her making bold moves, you know, it encourages me to continue on my path. And I mentioned, you know, some great leaders right here in Dufferin County that are doing some amazing things, amazing female leaders that are doing amazing things in their own path. And so, you know, I mentioned that they have been strong supporters, strong, strong cheerleaders. And, you know, I want, I want to encourage them to continue on their path because they've been there in my corner um, cheering me on every step of the way. I think it's so important, you know, when we have our network to to pull strength from and to bounce ideas off of. And, and it's so necessary to have our own little community, especially when we're serving the greater community. Absolutely. And Natasha uh, has a question for you. Can you share some challenges your organization has overcome and how you've gone about it? Um, how did you get support? And she says she knows everyone is not always on board with change. Great question. And so one of the things that we, we like to lead with are simply the facts. Um, one of the obvious challenge is why the Black Association? Um, and so we like to state, you know, the Black community is, you know, one of the most under, well, the underrepresented communities, and we're trying to advocate for those needs. And so when we state the, the simpler facts of um, the association and our purpose, then that changes the narrative. People are able to buy in and understand the vision that we're, tri we're striving for. Um, and so we also focus on the fact that uh, the association is inclusive. So by simply having the Black Association doesn't mean that we're shutting our doors to everyone else. You're more than welcome, regardless of how you identify, to learn, to share in this journey. It's a, it's a journey that we're all on, right? But it's balancing the scale and making sure that those who don't have a voice have a voice. And so that is one way that we have been able to overcome um, challenges. And even within the organization itself, it's, you know, sticking to our vision, sticking to what our mission is, um, you know, keeping that at the forefront allows us to be able to stay on track um, and to keep our purpose in mind. I think Any we have other another, questions? Okay. We have another question coming through. And just a comment, great answer, thank you. And just while we're waiting uh, for some more to come through, I thought I'd ask another one. Um, so a big part of your of the association is that focus on youth achievement and youth excellence. Um, we know that the stats that you shared were quite startling. That so many of of the black youth who aspire to post secondary but then don't don't feel as if they will they will get there. So the very existence of your association and the work you're doing to represent that black community is going to help, you know, break down those barriers and, you know, ins inspire you to then go after those dreams. And then you're making it all that more attainable with the scholarships that you have, uh, the association has created. So what is the best advice that you'll give to youth to inspire them to go after their dreams? Wow, great question. Um, the first comment will be, don't ever let anyone or society dictate what you can or cannot do. Don't let anyone ever put you in a box. Um, you have your own dreams. Be bold, be brave, and have the courage to go out there and try. You were born with many gifts, many talents. Don't suppress them. Wonderful. Thank you. 
Um, it was great, Alicia, to learn about the Community Hub, and that sounds like a great resource that we can utilize as a library to help um, our patrons with their own research and their studies and to help you know point them in your direction when they're looking for more information. Absolutely. It's called the Community Spotlight page. OK. And I think we'll be able to link to your website in our chat, so that way it's nice and accessible for everyone. Perfect. And I just see there's another question coming through. So what are the future goals of the DCCBA? Wow. Um, we ultimately, our goal is to apply for, apply and attain charity status. So that is number one. Future goals, um, we want to be able to build out a robust um, financial literacy program Program that will be ongoing, as well as coding. We want to make sure that that is ongoing. Um, we're also um, looking at some strategic partnerships, so it's partnering with organizations within Dufferin County that can help us to facilitate some of the um, events that we want to put on. So lots of great things on, on the horizon. So I think one of the best things that we can do um, right now, as those of us who are listening to this, is just to help spread the word and create further awareness about the association and the work that you are doing. Absolutely, that is one way of, um, of um, supporting the organization. Um, of course, I mentioned um, funding, of course, and so we have um, our store that was recently launched, and so you can um, purchase your DCCBA gear. Um, and it's it's very the um, the design is quite um, powerful. It simply says inspire. Um, and I can't think of another word that um, best describes the association than that. And, you know, that was compliment of um, our partner organization, Town Tees, uh, who was able to help us with that design. So that is one way of supporting the organization. Of course, donations, um, memberships and, and partnerships. Feel free to inquire um, how you can support us further as well. Oh, wonderful. I have a question. It's Lauren Alethea. Sure. Um, Fantastic presentation, by the way. Uh, wonderful to hear you you speak to the story of the DCCBA. You mentioned in your, your talk that part of what the DCCBA has been doing is helping other organizations create those diversity committees and, and different bodies where they're being more reflective and those sorts of things. Can you tell us what the uptick has been like on that and what the process looks like when you're helping these organizations do that? Perfect. So what we do is we have um, an RFP process, um, so request a proposal, and you simply uh, send us your, your need and uh, we respond with a, an estimate and um, provide you with um, our services accordingly. Um, given that we're still new, we haven't had um, any formal success in Dufferin County, but I'm proud to say that we have had um, lots of opportunities to share our expertise uh, outside of Dufferin County, um, from as close as Brampton to, um, I recently had the opportunity to speak on diversity initiatives with the Canadian Congress on workplace diversity and, and equity. So um, the demand is there. Um, and I'm sure we'll continue to get um, more uptake from within Dufferin County itself in the near future. Fantastic, thank you. I, I wasn't aware of the service, so it's great that we can let people, others, know in the community as well. Perfect. Well, Alethea, thank you for sharing your time and passion with us and for your dedication to making our community safe, strong and welcoming and inclusive to everyone. Uh, we hope that with the awareness that you created today, it'll further generate support and those resources for the Black community. And we look forward to partnering with you again in the future. Thank you so much and thank you for having me. It was wonderful to share the association with uh, your audience and I look forward to future partnerships. We just have some thank yous coming through in the chat. Awesome. Happy International Day, everyone. Yes, to you as well. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you, everyone, for joining us this afternoon.